And now the Blue Devils will slow it down. A look at the starting lineup for Duke. Again, Jeremy Roach and four very talented freshmen. Kyle Filipowski by far of this group off to the best start. But Roach has been an enormous key for the Blue Devils so far this season. The quality of shot that he has been taking. He was 3 of 14 against Oregon State, but bounced back with 21 against Xavier. He was outstanding. For Purdue, keep an eye on number 25, Ethan Morton. In this tournament, 13 assists and no turn. John Shire, as you can see, the youngest head coach in a major conference in America and a very young team. The Blue Devils start Jeremy Roach, their captain, the junior, and four freshmen in this game. Number eight, Duke, and number 24, Purdue with Keith Kimball, DJ Karstensen, Lee Cassell, the officials, and the Boilermakers get the first possession of the game. Derek Lively starting out on Zach Eady. He's got the size, but he is not a, a substantial body. He's not quite as big and strong as Eady is. And the Boilermakers work hard to get Eady touches. And here's his first, and it's tipped away by Lively. Good job by Lively to break contact to get around in front and knock that ball away. And now the Blue Devils will slow it down. A look at the starting lineup for Duke. Again, Jeremy Roach and four very talented freshmen. Kyle Filipowski by far of this group off to the best start. But Roach has been an enormous key for the Blue Devils so far this season. The quality of shot that he has been taking. He was 3 of 14 against Oregon State, but bounced back with 21 against Xavier. He was outstanding. For Purdue, keep an eye on number 25, Ethan Morton. In this tournament, 13 assists and no turnovers. Lively working hard again, and he forces a tie-up, and the possession arrow will give it to Duke. Lively's quickness has become an issue. He is not getting his body into Edie. He is breaking contact as the ball's coming in so he can get around in front. And that was just not a great pass in. And part of the reason was Mason Gillis was being guarded by Kyle Filipowski. Duke is bigger in the other matchups than Purdue. Roach being guarded by the freshman of Braden Smith. Filipowski, who can hurt you inside and out, misses the three. He's being guarded by Mason Gillis. He may want to take Gillis down into the low post. He's got a substantial size advantage. Now deep position for Edie, and now the foul by Lively. So they've tried to get it into him three times. They've only succeeded once, really. And really, the, the only way Duke can really stop that, it's asking a lot to say Derek Lively, keep the ball from going in there. With Filipowski guarding Gillis, he's got to put great pressure on the ball so Gillis can't see in there. Gillis sees just fine as he knocks down the corner three, and Purdue is on the board. Gillis was 0 for 5 the two games coming into this PK tournament, and he has been excellent. He was good against West Virginia and really good the other day. Freshman to Mark, I'm sorry, Jay. Freshman to Mark Mitchell from Kansas City. Kansas knocks down the baseline jumper. He's coming off a nice game on Friday. 16 points in the win over Xavier. Duke's doing a good job pressuring. They're pushing Purdue further out on the floor than they want to operate. Edie, a little shoulder bump to clear some space, and he knocks it home. And that's the problem with Edie. You let him get to that left shoulder where he can shoot with his right hand. He's going to make those. Now, you make him shoot with his left hand, he can make those as well, but he's not quite as effective. And now an errant pass, and it's numbers for Purdue. Morton can't finish it, though. Smart play by Morton. He is a really high IQ basketball player to pump fake there. He just couldn't finish it. Purdue beating West Virginia and Gonzaga to get to the championship game. Duke narrowly defeated Oregon State in the first day of the tournament in a low-scoring affair and then beat Xavier in the semifinals. That is Tyrese Proctor, the freshman from Sydney, Australia. Duke putting Zach Eady into a ball screen, and when he drops down, that pull-up jump shot is going to be there. Another Purdue turnover. Roach got a chance for an and one. Just a great recovery by Kyle Filipowski. He is causing a lot of problems on the defensive end with his length and his size. And you can see here's the ball screen coming up. Now ZD drops down into drop coverage. And you can just pull up there and shoot over these smaller Purdue guards. You're going to see Jeremy Roach do that. And now with the Filipowski doing a nice job pressuring, getting out into the passing lane, making that pass difficult. And Purdue mishandles it as a result. 
How important is Roach ultimately to uh, Duke's fortunes this year? Their only returning starter, upperclassman, captain, that sort of thing. Well, in a lot of ways, you heard Seth Greenberg call him the head of the snake. He's the captain, the leader of this team, and the oldest player. So as he goes, there's a there's a, a way to put it. Good drop step by Zach Eady. Yeah, Duke is going to go how he goes. When he's locked in, making the right decisions, taking the right shots, I think Duke is going to be really, really difficult to beat. Holly Rose got more. I've already seen in the couple of games we've seen Duke play, Roach has this unspoken communication. He'll give a head nod. He'll give a point. Helping Mark Mitchell, some of the other guys that are young on this team, know where to go and what to do with the ball. It's just this unspoken leadership that's kind of cool to watch as Jeremy Roach grows into that role this season. And again, out there with four freshmen as the other starters. And look at how the numbers have climbed, too, this year for Roach. As Edie, another thing that he does well, he shoots free throws well. Came into the game at 73% on the season. Knocks them both down. But well, makes him a weapon. And when you foul him, he's going to make his free throws. David Jenkins Jr. into the game now for Braden Smith. Jenkins, a fifth-year senior, a transfer most recently at Utah. He can shoot. Lively. This is the three. Edie the rebound. Lively has not made a shot this year that has not been a dunk. He's got nine field goals, all of them dunked. Good switch by Duke underneath. Edie the handoff and another turnover. Duke's pressure has had an effect thus far. Wide open, Filipowski for three. Oh, what a versatile talent Kyle Filipowski is. He can really shoot it. He is really skilled. And he's an outstanding pick-and-pop big guy. They can go down in the post. He just doesn't do it all that much. And an offensive foul on the Boilermakers. That'll go down as their fifth turnover of the game already. Game of the Phil Knight Legacy Bracket. Let's go back pregame. This is Cam Hyde. He is a walk-on forward on the Purdue team, and he is wearing what we call ear cam, and he was wearing it uh, during pregame warm-up, so from time to time, pregame, and now in the game as well, we're going to get kind of the view that the one of the players on the bench will see. Go into the huddle, take us into the timeouts, and see how the game looks to them. So if you were worried about what shoes Purdue is wearing, now you know. Right. Maybe we can get Cam to uh, look up a little bit more, but we'll, uh, we thank Cam for doing this today. And we'll be calling on him from time to time. A five-point lead for Duke. They're five for seven from the floor, Jay. And they have forced five Purdue turnovers. The turnovers are the issue. Purdue's turned it over five times. Duke has scored eight points off those five Purdue turnovers. And the Boilermakers have to be much stronger with the ball because Duke is bringing the pressure out on the perimeter, trying to force them further out. Duke was here at the original event, the PK-85, years ago, and they won it then, trying to do it for the second time in a row as Proctor shows a nice handle and a nice soft touch of the mid-range J. And that, that's his game. You know, using ball screens, pick and roll, and then he's very adept at pulling up. You're going to see Duke do that a lot because Zach Eady is not going to be up on those ball screens. He's going to be dropping to protect the rim. Ryan Young, the grad transfer from Northwestern, now in the guard, Eady, and Eady can be a weapon even when he doesn't touch the ball, just creating some space there for Fletcher Lawyer. And I think you're going to see Purdue run more action out of the middle third of the floor. That, it's much more difficult for Duke to bring help out of the middle of the floor. Boy, Filipowski's got some skills for a seven-footer. And the ball knocked away from Mitchell. You're having to make multiple dribble moves. That's going to put you in a little bit of a problem. Jenkins the puller. And Mitchell down with the board for the Blue Devils. David Jenkins can really score. Transferred in from Utah. 40% three-point shooter. Proctor misses a good look at a three. And down with the rebound is Edie. He averages 12 a game. Caleb first into the game. Filipowski on him. And the lefty up and good. Well, you get that kind of low post position. That was a really good pass from Fletcher Lawyer. Took a little sidestep to give him an angle. But Caleb first is really starting to play. He's a good player. He can back up Edie at the five. He can also play alongside him at the four, as he's doing right now. A couple of Boilermakers collide, and that leaves Roach wide open, but he can't hit it. Those short jumpers, Duke's going to have those all game long. So if people think the mid-range game is dead, it's not in this game. 
Newman into Edie, and a foul from behind on Young. So difficult when Zach Edie sets a screen and rolls down into the post. How are you going to stop that? It's like stopping a, a semi rolling downhill. And he'll now get his first breather, so he plays the first six minutes. And again, last year, alongside Travion Williams, splitting the time, played about 19 minutes a game. This year, it has gone up to 29 minutes per game so far on the season. Trey Kaufman Wren coming into the ball game for Zach Eady. That makes Purdue a little bit smaller, but more mobile. And he immediately draws a foul on Jacob Grandison, the grad transfer from Illinois. Hoffman Red is really good in the post. He's got great footwork and he's got a great feel for how to operate down there. The Blue Devils with a couple of players on the court right now who know a lot about the Big Ten. Grandison coming from Illinois, Young coming from Northwestern. As Purdue pulls closer now within one. Fletcher Lawyer is so good getting his feet set and into his shot. His shot preparation with his feet is impeccable. That was a great shot face. The immediate double on Young, who's been terrific off the bench for the Blue Devils so far this year. Blakes back to Young for the easy two. A sweet feed from Jalen Blakes. That was a nice job by Ryan Young to get rid of the ball so that Duke could reverse it and take advantage of the rotation off the double team. First the handoff to Lawyer. Good pass. Young read it, got a piece of it, and then commits the foul. And on Ryan Young, that's going to be his second. Purdue operating out of the middle of the floor has been effective. That little loop cut at the top of the key is tough to guard. The pass out of the double team and the immediate drive of the closeout. And as you draw that second defender, Trey Kaufman Wren, who came over to block. Now watch his shot fake. That's just big time. Fletcher Lawyer, he's got such shot credibility, you got to take that shot away. Simple little shot fake, and all of a sudden he's got a, for him, a very easy shot that for most, most players is difficult. But they, you know about the Lawyer family. Anything from 25 feet and in is called a layup. Older brother Foster, formerly with Michigan State, now off to a great start with Davidson, and Purdue will play Davidson in a couple of weeks. So it'll be a lawyer family affairs. He's gone to the bench. Smith has come back in. Also, Brian Waddell, a 6'8 redshirt freshman from Carmel, Indiana, is into the game. And we haven't said his name yet, but Derek Whitehead is on the floor for Duke, one of the most highly recruited freshmen of the nation. He's out of Newark, New Jersey. That's him right there. Misses the three. Got a late start this year because of a foot injury and subsequent surgery. Still feeling his way back into things, but Derek White, Whitehead is a bucket getter. Got fouled there and finished the play. Great job by Braden Smith. How good was he in the semifinal against Gonzaga? He just knows how to play. Yeah, against Gonzaga, what do you have? 14 points, 5 rebounds, 7 assists. 10-2 run, Purdue. Whitehead, baseline, knocked away by Kaufman Wren. Three on two. A lot of energy right now for Purdue. And a beautiful feed, but an equally impressive block by Lively. What a recovery by Derek Lively, the second. Or the third. He's the third. Isn't he the third? I think he is the third. No, he's the second. He's the second? He's the well, second. he should be the third. Yeah. <laughs> Wait do you see how good the third's going to be in about 20 years. That was a big-time block. Zach Eady coming back into the game. Caleb first going out. That is a, uh, a brief rest, just a minute and 49 seconds for Eady. We usually see him go out for kind of three to four minute periods. But there's a championship on the line today. Such a presence. Good job by Lively to just not let Eady get as close to the bucket as he wanted again. You got that arm bar into him. You got it. You're supposed to take it off as the player turns into you. You got to use two arms on Zach Eady. That's a big man. Roach. Blakes. And is it Eady that they get called for the foul? Looks like maybe Kaufman ran. Three throws coming for Duke when we come back. Here come the Boilermakers, Jay.
That smaller lineup was very effective getting more. Get to see Trace Jackson Davis going up against Armando Baycott and what we have been calling the year of the big man. And there are so many quality big guys, not only that have come into the game from the high school ranks, but have stayed around the game. Yep. It's remarkable how many great big guys are back. Bill Lepowski coming in, a guy like Edie, Baycott, Jackson Davis, Timmy, and others staying. And two big guys we gave short shrift to coming into the season were Julius Tabellis and Umar Balo from Arizona. Those two are formidable, and it's been a long time since I can remember anyone at that size running the court like Azulis Tabellis does. He, he's a jet. Between Maui and here, you and I have had a chance, champions, we've had a chance to see a lot of different teams. Is Arizona as impressive as any team you've seen this year? Offensively, they score as easily as any team in the country. Good pass. And Waddell slams it home. Edie the assist. Edie can pass right over the top of a seven-footer. He puts that ball up there, and it is rim high. Lively to Blakes. I'm not sure if I were John Shire, I wouldn't think about putting Filipowski at the five and seeing if he could draw Edie away from the basket. How about that spin move from Derek Whitehead? Derek Lively's done such a good job defending Edie in the post. He's going to score some points. There's nothing you can do about that. But he has made it really difficult on him to make catches where he wants the ball. And Lively's got one. You wonder if Purdue, again, tries to get back into Edie every chance they get. Maybe pick up a second on Lively. A little bit of a lane for Waddell. Edie had it, but lost it. And Lively really battled him for that ball. And an offensive foul called on Grandison. Great job there by Brandon Newman, who is an outstanding defender. He has played so well in this tournament. It's not like he's putting up big points. I mean, he had a great game against West Virginia. He had eight points, but his defense against the Mountaineers, I thought, was next level. Second foul, Jay, on Grandison as Newman goes to the bench. It, it feels like, you know, Edie, there's so much discussion about him, obviously, as now we get a call on Dariq Whitehead. But, you know, whether it's Morton or Smith or Newman or Gillis, everybody else on Purdue is pulling their weight here in this tournament. Well, Purdue has so many really good players. And I think I mentioned it on our last broadcast with the Boilermakers against Gonzaga. They're a team that doesn't seem to care who gets the credit. They have seemingly embraced all of their roles. Um, a very skilled team. And Matt Painter does such a good job developing players. He, he's a great talent evaluator, but he gets he gets Purdue type guys to come to West Lafayette and coaches them up over a lengthy period of time, and they all stay engaged. 18 years as the head coach. It's his alma mater. He played under the great Gene Cady back in the 90s. They don't get a lot of McDonald's All-Americans. They they tend to get guys who stay a little bit longer. It truly is a program. And we're, we've got two teams here that have two of the great arenas. Mackey at Purdue and Cameron at Duke. I think there should be a federal law where the top 10 arenas arenas in the country, they have to play each other home and home every year. Like Duke should play at Mackey yeah. and Purdue should play at Cameron. Travel on Filipowski. Yeah, if Mackey and Cameron aren't in your top five. You're making a mistake, right? They're both, I mean, they're both as good as, as any venue in the nation. Well, and I think I think what Mackey has shown is every arena in the country needs a gigantic drum. <laughs> That place gets as it's definite when when they're playing well. And they have traveled well here out to the Pacific Northwest Thanksgiving week here at the Phil Knight Legacy. The championship game and a Purdue with a three-point lead on Duke. Tyrese Proctor, a good defender. Got some length. Now they're splitting the post. That's hard to guard. Smith soft off the glass. And the lead is five. Boy, Braden Smith is just pretty and confident. I'm not sure there's a player on that floor that believes in himself any more than Braden Smith believes in himself. Now he's switched off on Filipowski. He's fronting him, trying to get into his legs. Proctor. Rebound Filipowski. Good ball movement. Mitchell baseline. 
challenged by Edie, and they play on. That's like running into a 12-story building. And Morton whips it into the corner to Gillis. And it'll go, and it's the biggest lead of the game for the Boilermakers. And that, Dan, is a hard shot that Mason Gillis just made. Shot fake, didn't move his feet, but yet established some rhythm to drill that corner three. Talk about a 3 and D guy. That's what colors those are. 26-18, Purdue. Yeah, I think we're, we're a little more casually dressed here, a little more low-key than those guys, but... We can't pull off that stuff. Well, well they start they, with a hat. Yeah, they can't play 18 holes after this is over. We can. <laughs> Mitchell with a pull up. A good recovery by Morton to put pressure on that shot. Mitchell down. It's five on four. Edie is fouled and a little upset with himself. He didn't finish it. How about that pass by Smith? A look away to the corner and then finds Edie. I mean, he made that pass by deceiving the defense with his eyes. Watch his eyes here. His eyes are going toward the corner. He's looking corner, and then boom. That's a big-time pass by Braden Smith. And Edie looked back at him right after the foul and acknowledged the pass for the freshman point guard. Yeah, I think he said, sorry, man. Cost you an assist there. Number two on Lively. So three different Duke players already with two fouls in this game. And that's that's a factor with Edie. He can wear you out and foul you out. And as we said earlier, he can make his free throws too. Now when the free throws go down, shouldn't Braden Smith get an assist for that? I love that rule. Give him an assist. Absolutely love that rule. Deflected, stolen away. Filipowski reaches out and grabs him, and it's another Duke foul, and it's number two on Filipowski. And that wasn't the type of grab that would draw an F1 for not making a play on the ball, but it did save a bucket. Just a good deflection and really smart by Lawyer to jump it. Wait, Purdue's defense has been locked in. So if you're John Shire, you've got Lively and Filipowski in the game with two because the guy you would go to, Ryan Young, is on the bench with two. They got some issues right now. And that means Purdue's got to continue to pound the ball inside. Because Zach Eady is such a good passer out of the post, if he gets doubled or doesn't have it, and Purdue is such a good cutting team, there are so many options there. But he's got to touch the ball almost every time down. Roach. And that will snap an 11-0 Purdue run. Boy, that was a tough shot. But Jeremy Roach took it with a great deal of confidence. But what a bounce back for him after he went 3 of 14 against Oregon State, put up 21 on Xavier. Now Duke barely won that first game against the Beavers. 54-51. Jump hook won't go for Edie. He got to that left shoulder, but Duke was able to force him into a little bit of a longer shot. Good recovery by Morton. Roach with a jump stop and draws the foul. Good penetration again by Jeremy Roach. And it's Braden Smith called for the foul. His second. Now Duke struggling for offense right now. Some of the bigs have foul trouble. Right now, Jay might be up to Jeremy Roach. To done a really nice job on Zach Eady, But you let him get a foot in the paint and get, let him get to that left shoulder. It's over. And Edie is extra. I can't tell you how hard it is to guard a 7-4 guy, and especially one that, that has skill and strength like Zach Edie. You fight him for position, then you have to take your hands off once he gets the ball. But if you let him get into that, well, they say let him get. If he gets into that spot where he's got a foot or two feet in the paint, it's basically over. If you can push him a little bit further out and make it two dribbles to get into the middle, then you've got a shot. And one area, Dan, where Purdue has been dominant in this tournament is the free throw line. That was free throw number four for Duke. I think they're one of four now. But Purdue, 10 of 10 from the foul line. That is a, a huge advantage to be able to not, not only get to the line, but knock your free throws down at a high rate. Including today, on the season, the Boilermakers have attempted 117 free throws. Their opponents, Jay, only 53. More than twice as many free throw attempts for Purdue as their opponents. And they make more than their opponents even attempt. Now you got a mouse in the house, Roach on first. 
What a pass. You got a mouse and you got a roach. You got some problems right now. Yeah, need to exterminate it. Mouse and <laughs> Good call. Yeah. Yeah, Roach got caught on Caleb first on the switch, and Purdue took advantage of it. That was a great pass by Caleb first. So Edie now eight points, four rebounds in 11 minutes of action. And we've talked about this over the last couple of games. Even if it doesn't feel like he's quite dominant, you look up at the end of the game, he's got 24 and 12. He draws so much attention, that opens things up for his teammates, and they, they can take advantage of it. Proctor the kick, Mitchell. Shot fake, step in, and got it. And now they're going to check to see if it beat the shot clock. It looked like it was still in his fingertips when the red light went off. And I think that's why the officials blew the whistle just to take a look. Good shot fake, but the clock is winding down. Yeah, still on his fingertips, right? At zero. Zero, yeah. Yeah, I think they're taking that one off. Yeah. So shot clock violation. Outstanding crew here today. Lee Cassell, DJ Carstensen, Keith Kimball. DJ Carstensen came over to our table before the game and said he was up at the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. His high school coach was being inducted, and he said someone came up to him and asked, are you Jay Billis? And I said, what a profound compliment to how handsome you are, DJ. I don't know. He, he seemed to take it in a different way. <laughs> he, did. he, did. he didn't seem too pleased with it. <laughs> Thought he had to check into some sort of medical facility. Yeah. Edie, just too strong. And again, lively playing with two fouls. And Edie's into double figures now with 10. And a good no call by the officials. They probably could have called a foul on Lively there because his arms were down. But... Well, there's uh, no doubt about who the go-to guy right now with the offensive end of the court is for the Blue Devils. Jeremy Roach playing off the ball with Tyrese Proctor in handling the ball. He can really move without it in order to hunt shots, and they need him to score in this game. Edie again. No team feeds the post more than Purdue, and you see why. He's got a dozen. You just have to get on that left shoulder, make him drop step. But if he gets to the middle of the lane and can shoot with that right hand, I mean, he shoots a much higher percentage there. Filipowski, though, with the rebound for first. Well, Purdue has established a great rhythm in this game. They are establishing their rhythm and disrupting all of Duke's rhythm. Number three on Derek Lively, the second. It was such a difficult assignment to have to guard Zach Eady. You got to try to stop him at the free throw line, then push him off. He had both arms wrapped around him. I mean, I've said it before. It's like guarding your dad in the driveway when you're eight years old. He, so difficult. And you give all the credit. It's not just Edie's size. It's his skill. He, he's, he's really improved his skill level. Holly Rowe can add more. Well, you know, what makes him so efficient at this size is he's had it his whole life. His mom was telling me before the game that he's been taller than every teacher he's ever had since first grade. He grew early. It wasn't like one big growth spurt. It's been steady. He actually believes he's still growing. He thinks he might even end up at 7'6", but it's a comfortable 7'6", if that's even possible. But it's so easy when he's out there. It looks very comfortable. Well, it's comfortable for him. It's not comfortable for anybody <laughs> trying to guard him. I can tell you that. And again, a guy who really didn't start playing basketball until he was about 16 years old. So he figures to keep improving as Filipowski picks up a much-needed bucket for Duke. Good call there by John Shire to get the ball in the middle of the floor to Filipowski where he could face up and then either shoot or drive off Caleb first. Just eliminates help. Now, what, is, what does Ethan Morton do there? He tries to come in if he... If he comes in to double and try to stop that drive, then you give up a wide open corner three. The middle of the floor is a great place to operate. You've seen Purdue do it. I think you're going to see Duke follow suit. Filipowski, one of just eight players in the nation and the only freshman to be averaging 15 and 10. Of course, Zach Eadie's another one of those eight. So we got two of the eight guys at 15 and 10 or better. And Zach Eadie, the only, the only player in the country averaging over 20 and 10. And another touch. Ryan Young is on him now. Here comes the double. And it almost leads to a turnover. Shot clock at five. Jenkins, tough turnaround. Yes! That does not bother David Jenkins to be in a late clock situation. When he was at South Dakota State, UNLV, Utah, he was a primary scorer. He was all Mountain West at UNLV. 
He's hit over 300 career threes. He will exceed 2,000 points at some point this season. Filipowski behind the back over first and Edie for the bucket. Oh, this young man's got a lot of game. He's got great feet. He's a committed rebounder. His mobility at seven feet is truly impressive. That Oregon State game, he switched out on a guard late and played some great defense on the perimeter. The handoff for Jenkins. Jenkins driving and is fouled by Jeremy Roach. Had a lane to the basket. If you help off, he could, drops it off to Zach Eady or throws it up to the rim. Jenkins operating late in the shot clock. Got a little bit of help from Ryan Young there. That's a big time shot and one that he is used to making. And Filipowski, when he gets a little bit of space, but he knew Edie was there, still able to get it up off the glass and in. That's a mobile seven-footer. Zach Edie going to the bench. That This small lineup was the one that took the lead when Duke was leading early. They're the ones that, I, this is the group that really changed the, the character of the game. And Jay, again, he's played a ton of minutes. He's played 14 of the 16 minutes in this game. 13 points, has not committed a foul. Purdue plays really good defense without fouling. Jenkins forces it into the backcourt. And Roach is shaking up. Roach is limping and grimacing off the ball right now. Proctor for three. And Roach down again, and Roach in some pain, and this time he's not getting up. What a rebound. And Roach is still down, and now they blow the whistle as the officials see him. He never got back into the backcourt. Yeah, he's holding his... And Jay will see at the half. I just want to know how many 7-4 guys LaFonso guarded. I, I have experience guarding 7-4 guys. I guarded Ralph Sampson, held him to 36 points the first time we played <laughs> against each other. And a lesser defender would have given up over 40. I, I no promise question. you that. Edie on the bench at the moment for the Boilermakers. Filipowski too strong. Out of bounds to Purdue. Let's see if we can get an update now on Jeremy Roach. Here's Holly. Jeremy Roach went over to the Duke bench and was seen to by athletic training staff. He took his shoe off and he was really massaging the ball of his foot and the top of that right big toe and in between the toe. He didn't want any more attention, though. Put his shoe back on and wants to come back in this game. They did give him some kind of an oral medication, and he has taken that. Holly, thank you. So we'll keep an eye on that. Obviously, a tremendously important player for the Blue Devils. Hoffman ran with all kinds of moves and patience in the paint. This great footwork by Trey Kaufman Red down in the low post. We've seen him do that every game. He's just got a great feel as a post player. Red shirt freshman, pretty good backup for Zach Eady at the five spot. Boy, if Purdue plays this way without Zach Eady on the floor, this is a formidable squad that Matt Painter has put together. I love the way they play. Newman from Valparaiso, Indiana. Everybody is contributing for the Boilermakers. And the defensive effort, whether Zidi's in or, or Zach Eady is in or not, has been really impressive by Purdue. They pushed Duke further out on the floor. They've sped him up. Filipowski for three, trying to keep Duke in. This dude has game, man. And he's evolving as a defender, getting better. But his offensive game is so impressive. Remember early in the game, Jay, Duke, uh, Purdue rather had committed five turnovers in the first four minutes. Not one since, Not probably. one since. Great cut back to Oregon. Well, there it is. The announcer jinx rears its way ahead. <laughs> but that's the kind of turnover that Matt Painter's cool with. That was a great back cut. And Roach back in. Little Sergeant Hulka working on this bestest yeah. buddy and big toe of the Duke defense. Jogging up the court to see how it feels. I don't think it's 100%, but it's good enough for him to be in there. Well, they have to have him in there. He yeah. scored 10 points in this game. His scoring is going to be vital if Duke's going to get back in this. So look how far Duke has pushed out on the floor. Roach off the ball right now. Proctor handling. Step back jumper. That is sweet. He's going to be a big time player. Tyrese Proctor, he's an NBA player that should still be in high school. He reclassed 
He's from Australia. Has played a lot of international basketball at a high level. Pro basketball. Out of the NBA Global Academy in Australia. Hoffman ran. Got it back. Gillis tried to kick it out, but he turns it over. Boy, these guys are everywhere, aren't they? Still a 13-point lead for Purdue, but a little spark here for the Blue Devils. Using Filipowski as a screener, and he can pick and pop, or he can roll to the basket. And Roach is down again. Oh, boy. We hope it's not. Remember, we actually did the game. Butler versus Duke in 2011. Kyrie Irving. Had a, I believe it was a toe problem back then. But it just... You hearken back to that. Just an odd injury. And you hope Jeremy Roach is going to be okay. And limping and kind of hopping, trying to keep some weight off that foot. But he's had to leave the game again. And this time he's going right to the locker room. That's great defense by Ethan Morgan. His help and recover defense was just outstanding. And now Proctor steps in to take a charge on Jenkins. Look at Ethan Morgan. He just stunts in, gets back, and gets in front of Whitehead and slows him down so that Edie can be the backstop as the goalie protecting the rim. So that was a big time play by Ethan Martin. He's a high IQ player on both ends of the floor. And a foul on Newman way out on the perimeter, and that'll be one and one, as you can see Roach making his way towards the Duke locker room. It wasn't so much the reach as it was the arm bar on the ball handler. You, you can... You can get away with a hand check, but the arm bar that you keep on there is just going to be a foul. So here's Proctor comes in averaging about five and a half points per game, four and a half rebounds per game. Versatile, talented. And he's really fluid. He can create and really good off pick and roll. He's got good patience. Filipowski out to protect him because he's got two fouls. Remember, Lively with three, Young with two, Filipowski with two. So Christian Reeves, a 7-1 freshman from Charlotte out of Oak Hill Academy, is going to get a little run here at the end of the first half. Now, Christian Reeves is going to be a good player. He just needs strength. He hasn't played much. So you can imagine that if he's guarding Edie, Purdue's going to go in and test him. Good pressure. Good job by Gillis to come back and be an outlet. Shot clock turned off. I don't think it should be a mystery where they want to go. They want to get it to Edie. And Morton is good a guy to do that as anybody. Edie the kick to a cutting lawyer. Tip no. Reeves down with it. Blinks. Oh, almost went. As Duke ends the first half on a suit, nine of them have made a field goal. Holly Rowe with some thoughts from John Shire. Well, Coach Shire said that the activity level, the active hand, hands and arms in the passing lane, disruptive Purdue defense was an issue for them in the first half. Their turnovers that led to transition baskets. He said, I thought the transition D and the three points were the biggest deal for us. Of course, Derek Lively did a nice job on Edie down in the post, but he said, really, it's that transition scoring and threes that we've got to worry about the most here. They do have Jeremy Roach back on the floor to start the second half after leaving with some sort of a right foot injury. Proctor misses the three. Edie tips it to Morton. But Purdue is gang rebounding. All five guys are going to the defensive glass for Purdue. They've limited Duke in this game to one offensive rebound. This is the best offensive rebounding team in the country. An early touch for Edie. No double team. But it won't stay down for him. Tried to go with the left hand, and you've talked about it. Fonz talked about it. If you can try to make him make a counter move, and he had to go to his left hand there. That was a great drop step. He just didn't finish it. 
So he's deadly with his right hand. He's good with his left, but you'd rather have him take left-handed shots, so force him to do it. Proctor banks it home over Edie. Those are the shots, Dan, that are going to be available. Mid-range jump shots, mid-range floaters. I think Duke's got to continue to attack in that area. Duke ended the first half on a 7-0 run, and they've got the first bucket here in the second half to get it down to single digits. You need a handoff to Lawyer, and fouled by Filipowski, who picks up his third. It's not a good foul by Kyle Filipowski. He got it on the reach. He was there, but just get there, be big. All he has to do is hedge out. The reach across the body is what picked up the foul. John Shire just went and had a conversation with his assistants. They will leave Filipowski in the game right now with three. Edie again. No double. He kicks it out, though. Edie gets it back, kicks it out again. Smith's so good at feeding the post. Uses ball fakes. So tough to stop when he gets to that left shoulder. And he's patient in the post. Took a dribble to get into the middle of the lane, a comfortable shot. It's hard to believe you can have a comfortable shot over a seven-foot shot blocker, but when you're 7'4", it can be comfortable. He has started to get a lot of international experience as well, a part of Canada's senior men's national team. Purdue gets everybody off the left side to allow him to go one-on-one -on -one in the post. And Lively's just got to get on the top side and force him to drop step, go to that left hand. Filipowski with an easy two off the inbounds. Got to force everything to go to the outside when you're guarding out of bounds underneath. You have to protect that basket. You're worried about the three, and you give up a layup. Gillis, a nice cross-court look to Smith. What great passing. Doesn't do it any better than that. That is just big time. You give Ethan Morton a lot of credit. He threw the first pass, the pass that led to the assist. Lively. Edie won't challenge him out there, and Lively misses the three. Double team. Lawyer gets the bounce. Well, you can talk soft rims all you want. That guy's just got a soft shot. I wonder if he counts touching the rim as a miss, as good a shooter as he is. The freshman comes in averaging 10 a game. Good help by Ethan Morton. He is a great help defender. Roach from the elbow, again. That mid-range area is going to be open. And a, Jeremy Roach is an outstanding mid-range shooter. <laughs> Lawyer off a screen. Long rebound to Smith. And Edie one-on-one -on -one overpowers Mitchell for the slam. Foul on Braden Smith. Everybody in scramble after the offensive board. And then asking somebody to play tough defense on the post on Zach Edie. That's a lot to ask. But this ball movement from this Purdue team. Bloomington against Indiana Wednesday night, a part of the ACC Big Ten Challenge. You know, Dan, Zach Eady has been the MVP for Purdue this point in the game, but second is Ethan Morton. He's got five assists, three rebounds. His help defense has been spectacular. You want to drop? There he is, coming up with a steal and off to the races. You want to call him an elite blue guy, or is he above that level? I mean, he has been fantastic. His help defense and his engagement on both ends of the floor has been fabulous.
So that was just Duke's second offensive rebound of the game that Lively pulled down. A team that has been dominant on the offensive glass can't get second chance opportunities. Nobody able to block him out. And then because defensive balance is so poor with everybody down below the foul line, and when Jeremy Roach went for that ball, if he doesn't get it, it's a layup on the other end with no resistance. Going to be a huge sigh of relief for everybody on the Duke bench and in the program that Jeremy Roach is okay, that he has come back out to play with whatever happened to his right foot in the first half. As now John Shire makes a couple of subs. Ryan Young and Derek Whitehead have checked back in. Yeah, Kyle Filipowski has probably been the best player and most productive for Duke, but the most valuable player from a leadership standpoint has been Jeremy Roach. Duke with a little full court pressure, trying to slow the advance a little bit. Now they're going back into a 2 3 zone. You got Mason Gillis in the middle. A lot of good passers on the floor. There's Edie. Guarded by Young. Left it short. Again, patience got the look he wanted, just left it short. But just a tough shot to have to make without being able to really pivot in there once he picked up his dribble. But a smart move by John Shire just to change the rhythm of the game with that 2 3 zone. And a younger guy coming from Northwestern, he played two games for Northwestern against Purdue, so he has played against ED before. Roach in the corner. In and out, and down to Lawyer. Boy, every Purdue player is going to the defensive class. Lawyer, no. Maybe the first bad shot you've seen Purdue take. Yeah. Caleb first comes in, so Purdue gets bigger as Gillis goes out. First and Edie in there together. Edie with 17 points, 6 rebounds, and 2 assists in 21 minutes today. That's productive. Yeah. His 40, his per 40 minute numbers are ridiculous. Almost 30 points and over 16 rebounds per 40 minutes. Why doesn't Painter play him 40? <laughs> See if Duke sticks with what they call their 12 defense. And they're sticking with it. 2 3 zone. Edie. In better rhythm that time, but a little bit too strong. Now they're going to put Edie in the ball screen. A good recovery by Newman. Staggered double up top. Nice drive and finish by Proctor. He's got all kinds of game. Duke was sped up earlier in the first half, but they're playing with much better patience now. Newman the catch over Roach, but he missed the jumper. Yeah, that 2 3 zone has really changed the rhythm of the game. A switch now Newman on Filipowski Proctor telling go down the low post but Edie's right behind him Young with a 16 footer not there rebound Edie yeah, that shot was more of an afterthought because Young found himself so wide open but if Matt Painter has to choose who's going to shoot that shot I think he'd rather have Young take it than some of the guards in that spot Lawyer baseline Edie Kick to the corner for Jenkins. In and out. And out of bounds to Duke. And Filipowski slow to get up. Wait, what a battle on the glass. A Trey Kaufman Red back into Ren back in the ball game for Purdue's. Edie's gonna take a blow. That'll give him a little bit of a smaller team to navigate this zone. Looked like it actually went off of Young there. Looked like his fingertips touch it just before it went out. So Kaufman ran in. Edie getting a break with the under 12 media timeout coming soon. Whitehead with a challenge. And Kaufman.
Ruthman Wren is called for the foul. Do you think Duke saw a bigger basket without Zach Eady in there? So Whitehead coming back from the injury we talked about. Foot surgery didn't start right at the beginning of the season. For people who haven't seen a lot about him but know the name, what does he bring? He is a bucket getter. Scores on all three levels. And he was battle tested in high school. He went to Montverde Academy, but just a versatile wing that really does it all. He can drive it, play off two feet, good shooter, and he can make challenge shots and get his own. Number two on the ESPN 100, right? Lively was one, Whitehead two, Filipowski seven. 8 0 run, meanwhile, for the Blue Devils. You're going to stick, looks like stick with this zone. Purdue's got to get people into the corners, flatten this out a little bit. Do a good passing team. They move it around. Newman forces up a tough one. First with the offensive rebound and put back. That's the problem with the zone. Blockout responsibilities are tougher to define. And Purdue goes so hard after the offensive glass. And that'll be the second on first to take us to a timeout with Purdue leading Duke by 11 in the championship game for the Phil Knight Legacy Bracket. Second on first. I saw what you did there. Very nice. Do you hear what I hear? Here at the Moda Center, Iowa State and North Carolina. So it's a big, uh, a big Sunday evening for Cyclones fans, both on the men's and the women's side. Some of the stars in the women's tournament. Caitlin Clark, although Iowa lost to UConn, Aaliyah Edwards had a big game. Stephanie Soares for Iowa State. This is the first time that the women's bracket, there have been two women's brackets alongside the men. PK-80 was just men, but a total of 24 teams, 32 games in three venues over a four-day period. And no other player in the country do I enjoy watching more than Caitlin Clark of Iowa. She is a baller. Proctor down to Young. And it won't go down. And no second chance opportunity for the Blue Devils. Great recovery by the Purdue defense to get two bodies on Young. He wasn't just going against Kaufman Wren. That'll walk. Eighth turnover committed by the Boilermakers. Teams are even at eight apiece. The quote-unquote complimentary players for Purdue have been stars in their roles. You know, Brandon Newman comes into the game. Ethan Morton has been terrific. You talk about a total team effort for Purdue thus far in the game. We've seen it. And in the tournament, Jay, we talked about this a little bit in the first half as Whitehead knocks down a jumper, so he's coming to life here. Ethan Morton has 18 assists and one turnover in this tournament. How'd he turn it over that one time? <laughs> Waddell. Duke gets back. First is open, though, and hits the baseline jumper. First was open for the lob, but then adjusted his position to go out into the short corner. Smart play by Caleb First. And look how he hedges and then recovers to Filipowski. Gives him a different feel, obviously, than Zach Eady when First is into the five spot. Boy, they talk and move. Roach! Everything but the finish. Young, who's a great offensive rebounder, finds Proctor. And now Purdue has it. Five on four. Filipowski got knocked down. That's why Newman's open. It's remarkable that Purdue has kept Duke to just three offensive rebounds in this game. Great pass. Young, another offensive rebound. And he's going to the line. Caleb first, open for the lob. Waddell decided not to throw it, but then he adjusts his position, gets open along the baseline, and Ryan Young lost him underneath. Just a smart cut by Caleb first. 
But a good pickup. Young's been a very important guy. The grad transfer from Northwestern as he knocks down the first. And Matt Painter bringing Zach Eady back into the game. First will stay, though. Duke doesn't beat Oregon State without Ryan Young. He had eight offensive rebounds in that game. He had 11 points, 15 rebounds overall. Coming into this game in the tournament, in these the two games prior, Oregon State and Xavier, Ryan Young had 19 points, 21 rebounds, 13 of those rebounds on the offensive end. So how's how's a guy who is a so-called below the rim guy? How does he get so many offensive rebounds? Positioning and smarts, like he's got a nose for the ball, but just positions himself based upon where the shot is coming from. I mean, nobody's better at that than Oscar Shibwe. I mean, Shibwe gets credit for rebounding because of his physical gifts, but the truth is, Oscar Shibwe is an incredibly smart player. It's kind of been in this 9 to 11 point range for several minutes now. And a steal. Roach deflected it. Proctor's got it. And it goes. A great use of the left hand by Tyrese Proctor. For this defensive change with a 2 2 1 three quarter court press back to the 2 3 zone has really been effective. First drives and draws the foul. That'll be on Derek Lively. And that'll be number four on the freshman. Reaching across with that right arm, knocking the ball away. And then Proctor using the left hand to get it over Ethan Morton. Boy, Proctor has been huge for the Blue Devils cause today. He's got 16 right now. He's going to get better and better. He's not shot the ball to his capabilities thus far in the season. Had a really good game against Delaware, but you know, his shooting numbers have been down. But he's a much better player than his numbers indicate. I think Matt Painter said that to Holly Rowe as he was going off, and he's right. He's a talented player that is going to play a long time in the NBA. Roach. And it's tipped out by Lively to get another possession for Duke. Blake Snow. And now the Boilermakers have it. When Purdue's facing that 2 2 1, the Boilermakers have to break that pressure to score. Who can man to man after the miss? Now they're back in the zone now. Smith, the guy not highly recruited by power conference teams, as that one goes in and out. Edie with a rebound, keeping it alive, kicks it out. Boy, what a battle for the ball. Still 10 to shoot for the Boilermakers. Morton rises up for a three. Duke ball. This zone has forced a lot of perimeter jumpers. Yeah, Edie not getting as many touches in comfortable spots against the zone. That's exactly right. They, they have made him uncomfortable. He's catching it further out. Just a, a tough defense to get a good rhythm against. Mitchell, and it's blocked by first, but it bounces to Lively. Shot clock did not reset, of course. It's at six. Roach with a crossover. And again, everybody getting a touch. It's out of bounds to the Blue Devils. Duke making some noise, starting to get back into it. Still an eight-point lead for Purdue with 7.08 to go. All into the middle a little bit more, not just to Zach Eady, but if they can move Mason Gillis maybe to the free throw line, they might have a chance at some high-low, collapse that defense, kick it out to some open shooters that can shoot the ball in rhythm. It's been difficult for Purdue to establish a rhythm, first against that 2-2-1, three-quarter court pressure, and then the 2-3 zone. Duke getting a heavy dose of the Big Ten the next couple of weeks. Purdue today, Ohio State, Wednesday night on ESPN as part of the ACC Big Ten Challenge. And then six days after that, Iowa in the Jimmy V at Madison Square Garden. Also on ESPN, Illinois and Texas. The other game will be a great Jimmy V doubleheader. Turnaround by Whitehead. 
Boy, and the Boilermakers, Jay, have had their fingertips on a number of defensive rebounds in the last couple of minutes and haven't been able to squeeze them. Yeah, Duke has done a much better job the last six, seven minutes on the offensive glass. They had one offensive rebound for you know, close to 25, 30 minutes of the game. And they have been much better on the glass. Now they're up to eight. Derek Lively's grabbed a couple. Ryan Young came in and grabbed a couple. Kyle Filipowski at the line for the Blue Devils. 19 points, 14 rebounds in a 54-51 win over Oregon State in the first round of this tournament. One thing the Blue Devils did, though, in both of their wins, neither opponent, Oregon State or Xavier, made a field goal in the last five minutes of the game. And Duke beat Oregon State by three and beat Xavier by seven. By the way, we'll have Xavier and Gonzaga in the third place game of this bracket. That is at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific tonight on ESPN. Good job by Caleb first to break to the middle. But thus far, Purdue's not been able to break that 2-2-1 in order to score. Now a touch for Edie, and it goes. Now that was a comfortable move because of where the ball came in from. Good pass from the wing to get it into Zach Eady. 19 points, 10 rebounds, another double double for Zach Eady. Mitchell. Smith down with a rebound. That's his fifth rebound. We've talked about it in their earlier games, mostly recruited by mid majors. There's some probably other Big Ten coaches saying, boy, this guy's better than maybe we knew he was, or how did we not get this guy? Yeah, a lot of head coaches looking at their assistants going, what were you guys doing? Weak side rebound by first, giving the Boilermakers great minutes. They look first has had a great game. Boy, they share it. Edie the rebound, and I think they're going to get Filipowski for the foul here. Filipowski thought he had him blocked out, but Edie just reached over. And the officials you know, probably telling these guys, look, we can't punish this, punish Zach Edie for being bigger than you. He's just bigger than you. That's not our fault. Number four on Filipowski. Edie's got just one foul today in 26 minutes. But if you get in trouble inbounding the ball, all you have to do is throw it up high to Edie. But forget it. Lawyer blocked by Lively. You can't try to avoid a blocked shot. But then Lawyer reaches around from behind and creates a turnover. How about your big guy, 7-4, getting on the floor? And now here comes Proctor with a full head of steam. And Offensive foul, reaching out with the off arm. And guess who? Ethan Morton. Ethan Morton's only got two points in this game. But he's got five assists, three rebounds, a couple of steals, a block shot. Picks up this charge. He has been a star in his role. And then Zach Eady diving on the floor to get that loose ball. Winds up getting a wide open three out of the corner. They just didn't hit it. What a team effort over all three days, really, by Purdue on Thursday, beating West Virginia by a dozen. Edie had 24 and 12. The Boilermakers shot 51%. They played great against Gonzaga. Won 84 to 66. Edie with 23. They were down eight early, but out rebounded the Zags by 15 and had 21 assists on 29 field goals. They're just playing great team basketball. Caleb First has done a really good job of breaking to the middle against that 2-2-1 two, two, and giving an outlet. Lawyer in the corner. Got it. And we had just talked about breaking somebody to that free throw line. I thought it might be Mason Gillis. He's not in the game, but it was Caleb first. And that causes that 2-3 to contract. And then first found Lawyer in the corner. It's always good to have a it's always good to have a lawyer when you need one. And they've got one and he's got 15 points in this one day. At 14 points in the game against Gonzaga, he is just perpetual motion. Moves very well without the ball. His shot preparation impeccable. 14 against Gonzaga, 15 in this one. And still five minutes to go to add to that. Tell people what you mean by shot preparation. 
Well, he gets his feet set so quickly. So even while he's moving, you know, he moves into a shot very well. He doesn't get prepared after the ball arrives. His feet are prepared before the ball gets there, so he's ready to launch it as soon as he catches it. Deflected away by Lawyer. But Duke has not hit a three in this second half. They're 0 of 8 from three, shooting 30% overall against this Purdue defense. Purdue hasn't been that much better. They're 35%, but they've hit three of their 12 three-point attempts against that 2-3 zone. Roach will try one. Tough shot. Great defense by Ethan Morton again. Smith. Edie's got it. And they'll reset up top with 15 on the shot clock. Morton between the legs, the kick to first, shot clock at five. And it is off Lawyer out of bounds, back to Duke. Good defensive possession by the Blue Devils. John Shire, first year head coach of the Blue Devils, nine years as an assistant, of course, played four years, won a national championship. He Back was, in 2010, he was a great player at Duke, over 2,000 points, an All American, one of the all time greats. Golapowski left it short. Out of bounds, and it is going to be Purdue basketball. The activity level of this Purdue defense. That was a bad shot that Duke just took. But they are swarming to the ball with all five guys getting to the glass on the defensive end. And up by 12 with 3.43 to go. I get started five years ago. It has expanded to include women's brackets this year. And there's the man himself. As Phil Knight gets honored here at halftime of this game. Along with Mark Hollis, the former athletic director of Michigan State. And you can bet that this this was Mark Hollis's idea. He's had so many great ideas yep. for premier basketball events. All these teams playing three games in four days, spending Thanksgiving, and then this weekend up here in Portland before they head back to their wherever they're from and keep going. But boy, a chance, just like we talked about when you play in a tournament like Maui or the Bahamas or anywhere. Boy, what an opportunity for these coaches to learn about their teams early in the season. And I think Matt Painter is learning a lot of things that he's going to be very happy about the way that his Boilermakers have played. Well, he's, he has learned, if he didn't know already, he probably did, that he's got a team full of fighters. And we talked about the continuity of the program. I mentioned this is one of my favorite stats. In the last 43 years, Purdue's had two head coaches. Gene Cady for 25, Matt Painter for 18, and Painter's contract gives him seven more years. He, I mean, he's a lifer there, right? Played there. Been there forever. Outstanding job. Outstanding ball movement. Edie the assist. Lawyer the three. Boy, you double Zach Edie and you get punished for it because he's such a good passer out of it. And Purdue, Fletcher Lawyer did a great job of getting in his vision to present himself for that open three. Filipowski with a turnaround. Smith coming down to get the rebound. He is really an active, tenacious rebounder for a guard his size. But we've talked about it. They're sending all five guys to the defensive glass. And so he makes himself available. They're sacrificing maybe a little bit of a fast break to make sure they get possession. He's got seven rebounds in this game, Jeff. And he's going to say, I skied for all of them. <laughs> Derek Lively, the second, just fouled out of the game. He has drawn the assignment of Zach Eady more often than not tonight. And now take a look when the ball goes into Zach Eady. They double him. It comes over, and now all of a sudden, Fletcher Lawyer presents himself right in his vision and gets a wide open three. That's beautiful basketball by Purdue. Roach called for the foul. Boy, I, I think a lot of the other coaches around the Big Ten, they know nothing is ever easy when you play Purdue. It's just such a consistently solid, good program. Better than that, really. But I, I think this Boilermaker team over these three games, Jay, they put a lot of people on notice that they might be better than, than people thought they would. No, this team is legit. That Filipowski on the foul looked like. 
Yeah, Purdue, when you think about it, like Matt Painter had a Final Four, you know, right in his fingertips when Virginia made that ridiculous play late in the game to send that to overtime. And they were so close to reaching their first Final Four since I believe it was 1980 when Lee Rose was the coach. Filipowski becomes the second Blue Devil to foul out. Zach Eadie's going to lead the country in fouling other guys out of games this year. No question. And he's going to spend a lot of time in this spot right here. It's a foul line. So you have to give Zach Eadie a ton of credit for the amount of work he has put in over his coming up on three years at Purdue now. This is his fourth 2010 game of the six games in which he's played this season. Now you're not going to be able to count all the ones he has by the end of the year. Roach over Edie, but nothing falling right now for the Blue Devils. And another Duke foul. I think it's Ryan Young. Purdue up to a 17-point lead in 227 away from a championship in the legacy bracket in the invitational bracket just across the way the Veterans Memorial Coliseum. They got a good one going on right now. North Carolina trying to get out of here without losing for a second time. That's the third place game as they've got a one-point lead on Alabama. And if you've not seen Alabama's Brandon Miller yet, that dude is the real thing. That game on ESPN. Now Purdue can use clock. I mean, they can run all 30 seconds. They don't need to score again. Smith a little bit strong on the three. What a rebound by Caleb First. He's been fantastic in this one. What a rebound by Caleb First. Was now big time 11 points and eight rebounds off the bench that was in traffic he's left-handed he just reached out with that left hand fought the block out by whitehead and corralled that ball took it to the other side of the rim what a big time play by caleb first Yet another rebound for Braden Smith, his eighth. What a performance by Purdue. They beat Gonzaga by 18, and now they're leading Duke by 19. I mean, they are they are winning handily against top 10 opponents. And it's a total team effort. You, know, you can go down the list of Purdue players that have been in the game and the solid contributions they've made on both ends of the floor. Number 25, Ethan Morton, chief among them. A the number of players that, that are basically stars in their roles. JD the kick. Lawyer to a wide open Morton. So how about in this tournament, Gonzaga, North Carolina, Duke, none of those teams able to win a championship in their respective brackets. We don't have chalk on either side. Going to be Iowa State and UConn for the championship on the invitational side. Rochno and first with another rebound, number nine. And now they're on their feet. All the Purdue fans who have made their way here to the Pacific Northwest are really soaking this one in. And they should. Their team has been magnificent in this tournament. Purdue left no doubt which team was the best in this bracket. Lawyer. First another rebound, so give him a double-double. And now the shot clock just about bang on with the game clock. They're going to hold it. And the celebration is going to begin for the Purdue Boilermakers. They held Duke to one point in the last eight and a half minutes and win it going away.